Okay, so you want to sum all digits or numbers within a single cell. The numbers are separated by something like a comma or a semicolon, a delimiter. Now, if you're in Excel 365, you can use a function called TextSplit. If you don't have Excel 365, you can create your own custom function. I've called the function CellSplit. So I'll show you how to do that and I'll also give you the code for that function. Okay, so I'm going to start off by explaining how to use text split and then the second part of the video, how to create this custom function. So with text split, what you can do, first of all, is tell Excel where the text is that you want to split. So that's in B2, comma. And your cold delimiter is the delimiter or the character that is currently separating out your numbers. So for us, that's a comma, and I've got to put that in quotation marks, but this would work if it was a semicolon or a space or whatever it is. Just put that delimiter within the speech marks. So I'm gonna close the bracket and press enter. You can see it spills its results into surrounding cells. Now, if I look at the alignment of those values within those cells, you can see that each number is left aligned. So currently, what that's doing is returning a text version of these numbers and we need to convert them to actual numbers and there's a number of ways you can do that first way would be to put two minus signs in front of your text split function you can see that the values are now right aligned i'll undo that the other thing you could do is say plus zero at the end that will convert them to numbers or you could use the value function which will convert a text string to the number it represents. So any of those methods will work. So then all we need to do is sum up those individual amounts. So we put this whole formula within the sum function, and it will add up the numbers for us. Now, if you don't have Excel 365, then one way around this is to create your own custom function. I've called it cell split. Now, to create the custom function, what you'll need to do is copy the code that I provided in the description of this video. Then press Alt F11 on your keyboard, and that'll open up the Visual Basic Editor. Now, down the side here, on the left side, you should see the Project Explorer. If that doesn't appear, go to View, Project Explorer. Then you need to look for the workbook that you're currently working in, the one that you want to add this function to. So mine is called Sum All Numbers Within a Cell. And you need to make sure that you've got a module within that project. Now, if you can't see a module folder or a module, just go to Insert Module, and that will create a module for you. So within that module, you need to paste in the code that I've provided with this video. And what it's doing is using the split function to split the values out, just like text split does within Excel itself. The function's got two arguments, cell, which is the cell that contains the text values you want to split, and then delimiter, which allows you to tell Excel what delimiter is being used in your text string to split the numbers out. So let's see how this works. So cell split should now appear in this IntelliSense list for you. So if you remember, the arguments were the cell that contains the text string you want to split, comma, and then in quotation marks, you put in the delimiter. For us, that's a comma, but it would work just as well if it was a semicolon or a space. Close the bracket, press enter. Now, when you press enter and you're not in Excel 365, you won't see all these numbers spilt out into surrounding cells. But what you've got to do is, first of all, convert those text strings to a number. So I'll say plus zero at the end. Then you want to sum up the numbers. So sum, open bracket, close bracket at the end, and it should add up the numbers in that cell. If I copy it down, it'll do it for the other rows. Now, if you're using this cell split method, the VBA function method, you will need to save your workbook as a macro enabled workbook. To do that, you go to file, save as, and up here, you need to make sure your file type is Excel Macro Enabled Workbook, not Excel Workbook. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover. 
in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next video.